So I'm going to go through and just show a few of the uh, kind of the um, obviously with these kits you can kind of customize them however you want really as far as the drivetrain. So I'll go through that now and kind of show um, what I did and if I can remember where I got things I'll I'll shout give a shout out to those companies and those people. Um, so I did I went with the um, LS3. Um, that was purchased from uh, Pace Performance. Um, they're really easy to, to work with. Delivery was really simple. Um, they, they're really good. I had a few questions about um, the, the harness and everything and they, were, they answered them really nicely. And um, the, the PCV system, the positive crankcase ventilation, um, they answered those questions nicely as well. So they were really helpful. Um, as I said, I, I fired the engine up a couple days ago and it was, it's been, um, probably about 10 months since I actually ordered it. Um, I did have to, they did prime it. I probably shouldn't have done that because it sat for 10 months and I had to prime it again anyway. Um, but it, once I did that, it, um, and I'll kind of go through a couple of the problems I have that weren't with the engine itself. Um, but were actually with the fuel pump. But um, once I got that figured out, it started right up and sounded beautiful. So um, I'll post that video as well. Um, but so this is an LS3 um, from Pace Performance. Um, it's got the hot cam. So it's the really the LS376 525. So 525 horsepower. Um, don't know what it makes at the wheels, but maybe eventually we'll, we'll get to that and, and, and see what it does. But sounds beautiful um i do have the as you can see right now just temporarily i have the uh, air intake system um, and i did purchase that um, the dual intake which i don't think is actually going to work with this ls3 um, because the specs on it say that this mass airflow sensor is supposed to be 10 inches away from the throttle body and within a uh, straight six inch section of pipe and so the only way I can do that is um, with this um, Y split is to have it sent straight back, it sends it right over the exhaust. Um, so it's going to get really hot there. And I don't even know if I'm going to have uh, clearance when the body goes on. So, you know, I might have to, that was probably a purchase I shouldn't have done. That's one of the options when you buy the GTM kit um, is to, to have this um, dual intake. Uh, probably should have just gone with the single intake, which you can then just have it bend right from here over to the side and out there. And you can put the straight six inch segment right here and it's clearly 10 inches away. So that's probably what I'll end up doing. I'm just doing a single intake on the driver's side and that'll free up the passenger side. Um, if I do need to do any kind of um, oil cooler or anything like that once we get going so we'll see but right now this is just temporary um, just so I can get the motor started and tested and all that kind of stuff um, I did again so from uh, V Raptor Speedworks I did get the Kooks exhaust um, it's beautiful sounds great um, I'll need to do a little bit of adjustment on that um, it's in there good enough so that there's no leaks um, but I will have to, uh, again, do a little bit of adjustment right now because it is sticking up just a little bit too high above, um, where the body goes on. Um, it's not going to fit, but that'll be something simple. Um, and I'll be able to fix that. So once I'm down here, I'll, at least I'll show you. So I did go with the Mendiola transaxle. Um, and this is actually, uh, the Mendiola S5R. So this is um, their sequential transaxle, and I haven't seen anybody else put one in. I'm sure that they have, um, but this was not a nice fit with the um, the transmission mounts that come with the Factor 5. So there's a lot of modifications that need to be done in order to fit this um, sequential transaxle. And the first thing was the those two little tabs um, that usually stick down right here for the Porsche transaxle. Obviously those need to go because it's going to bump right in. Um, and then these, usually there's straight segments that go straight down to here. 
um, and those got in the way of the, um, the reverse here and the sequential um, drives here. So all of these cables bumped into um, the supports. So basically you had to fabricate new supports on either side to clear those cables. You could have probably um, run the cables in a different direction to get around those, but I had to do modifications anyway, so I figured this was the time to do it. Um, and in doing so, that um, messes up where the actual transmission mounts are going to go. Um, I was able to use the Mendiola um, transmission mount that Factory 5 provided. Um, I did do some modifications. Um, uh, and I did work with uh, Ian Kirkland from Mendiola quite a bit. He was really, really helpful. Also sent along this bracket um, for to help me kind of situate where the uh, transaxle is going to attach to that Factory 5 bracket. So that's just been welded um, together, again, with some modifications, but sits perfectly nice. It's on the um, polyurethane um, bushings um, and the mounts sits nicely. I think I have it nicely um, kind of centered and lots of clearance on either side. Um, had to go ahead um, and get a new um, gear oil temperature sensor just to make sure that the transaxle doesn't overheat. We can kind of monitor that and if we need to get an oil cooler for the transaxle, we can go ahead and do that. But uh, Ian mentioned that, you know, we'll kind of cross that bridge if we need to. If it seems to be staying at a nice temperature, then we won't need to go that route. But I do have, um, since I'm using the um, Pace Performance uh, wiring harness and the fuse box, I made a little hole over there, which I'll clean up. Um, this one's completely empty. But there's a lot of space down in there if we need to um, do any kind of um, plumbing for any kind of oil cooler. Again, we can kind of use this other side scoop um, if I need to do that. Um, so again, big shout out to Ian Kirkland from Mendiola. Uh, really helpful in getting me the transaxle. Um, they do take a while to, to get them, but you know, their craftsmanship and workman, workmanship is um, from what I hear is top notch and so far it's been working so I think it's all worth it. Um, so again, kind of waiting on the transaxle for quite a while but um, it allowed me to kind of work on some of the other stuff um, to, to kind of prepare for that. So again, had to do some things out of order just because of the weight but not a huge deal. And um, just to show this again, so the back end of the transaxle I did purchase from uh, Remark Industries, um, the gear dash. So it's gonna allow me to really kind of know what gear I am in. Since this is a sequential, it's not an H pattern. So you can't just look at the where the gear stick is to know what gear you're in. So um, this will be installed once I get it hooked up. It's not hooked up right now. Um, it'll tell me what gear I'm in. So that's gonna be useful and got the gauges just temporarily mounted just so I can make sure everything is working okay. Again, center console temporarily mounted um, just so I can get the, um, the shifter in the right location um, so it feels ergonomic um, and right where I want it. And we can kind of do the modifications with this piece of wood um, so I don't destroy the, the actual center console. So that's, I think for the most part, pretty much it. 